We are digging into the weeds a little bit here, but the, the, the goal is to prove that these tools, as relatively simple and straightforward as they are, they can be used to model bridges of any complexity geometrically accurately, which means that this model is going to be viable down the road as a source for a deliverable, whether that deliverable is in 3D or whether it's consisting of 2D views of this model. Agreed. And what I just did is just added a default variation as David explained, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to this cross section. That way we could control these depths based on a variation input, um, rather than coming in and hard coding in uh, these dimensions. And we'll use this for creating a step in our girder right here for the shallow span. And to do that, we'll go ahead and create a variation table. So within all plan, you have the options to create either a, a formula that could act as a variation or a table. So we'll go ahead and create a table for beam depth. And the way these variation tables work is you have a X and Y, X is usually the stationing. So we have Stations at 0, 160, 225, and then we want these to be free. And then the beginning span is going to be 6.5, and then we have it changed to 3.5. And you can see that it gives us a graphical uh, representation of our data. We have other options uh, in terms of how do we want to change uh, the interpolation between these elements. You could do a linear. Uh, interpolation, which will do this. Uh, you have parabolic, where you could decide which either the beginning or the end is flat, or you could have free on both, oh, flat on both ends, and create an S curve as well. So you have different options available in terms of variations. For our purpose, it's going to be a a step change, so we'll keep it free. And the benefit of this is that it helps us quickly apply data uh, within our model by just doing a drag and drop. Concept here is fairly simple. We're using basic math, uh, the Excel spreadsheets that we all have for these sorts of calculations, or in this case, just really, really simple straight up numbers to drive changes in the structure. For a step change like this, it's pretty easy. Um, if I'm cambering a precast girder though, I can use just a simple function, a parabolic function with the narrowest depth at the middle and the deepest at the ends. Um, if I want to do something that's more complex, like say cambering a steel girder, I have the calculations coming out of a spreadsheet somewhere, or an analytical software, I can put them in here and interpolate between them using a parabolic or a linear function. And I get all the data that I need, I have the correct geometry, um, and I get a model that looks right and can be used in a 3D setting to do measurements, to do um, conflict checking, to check clearances. Correct. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go a little bit forward and bring in a save state of the project. Uh, right as David was talking, I was able to apply a skew to the deck. Uh, it's fairly simple where we could really control how these cross sections are laid out according to our alignment. I was able to go to my superstructure and my cross sections and apply a 20 degree angle. Of course, we have additional stations as I've added them before, uh, but we'll take a look at it again as we work with the cap itself. Thank <laughs> you.